Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and we're going to be making this animation using RealFlow. If you want to see how I set up the scene, the lighting, and the textures, uh, check out the first tutorial where I made this animation using Cinema 4D's native tools with no plugins. I made slight changes to the textures. I'm going to show that at the end if you want to see. You can check out the original animation that inspired this on my Instagram at Ojang. Follow, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And without being said, let's go. So I'm using the exact same scene, but I removed all the slope and the stage and all that stuff. So I'm going to add something different here. I'm going to add a huge sphere and that sphere is going to rotate and the brain is going to slowly melt on this sphere and kind of rotate with it till it gets out of the screen. Um, the lighting, the materials, everything else is the same. The settings, yeah, everything else is the same. So yeah, we made a sphere, pretty high segments, hexadron, hexedron, whatever. And that's going to use as our um, liquid catcher. And let's just animate its rotation. I want to animate it from kind of rotating like that from left to right and do a full uh, rotation by the time the animation ends. So I'm just rotating, rotating it 360 degrees. I'm removing the curve from the keyframes that's it but now we're gonna use a fill emitter on real with real flow and i'm gonna drag the brain to the emitter we're gonna add a few demons one is gravity the second is the volume the k volume and the third is drag now the the, the volume gives us a, a box field and it's going to contain all the particles within that box field. Once the particles get out of that box, they get killed, they get deleted. So that saves us calculation time on particles that we don't see. We're going to set the drag up to 0 0.2. And that's it. Gravity is default. Uh, and yeah, let's just hide this fear for now. And now we can see that we have a falling fluid. Let's just add a linear field to the gravity so we can animate the, the, the transition of the gravity, I guess. And that'll make the fluid kind of slowly fall down from the right. And we're going to keyframe the linear field down here and then keyframe it on frame 50 up there. And then we're just going to move one more frame and get it out of the frame. And as we hit play, you can see that our brain is slowly melting. Let's set, it, set all the curves to linear. Let's just hide a brain. And now we can see that we have a falling brain. Nice. I'm going to add a random field to the gravity. Set it under the linear field. Set the linear field to multiply. That's going to slowly reveal the random field as the linear field goes. We're going to set the inner offset to about 75%. And we're going to set the type to noise. Scale to 500. Loop period. Um, sorry, animation to about 10%. That's going to give us slight irregularities to the gravity. Um, it's very subtle, but... It's a nice touch. Let's set um, collider tag on the sphere. Set the friction to 0.8 and the sticky to 25. That's going to make sure our liquid is going to really stick to the to the rolling sphere as it rolls, and it's going to kind of grab it out of the frame. Let's set um, volume tag too, which is going to allow us to set more accurate collision geometry. Now I want to change the fluid type to vis viscoelastic and I'm going to reduce the viscosity to 0.5. I don't want the fluid to feel too watery and too fluidy. I want it to really be more gelatinous and more maybe honey-like or um, really feel like it was a solid thing that melts like wax rather than becomes water. So I think the effect is going to be stronger. And as you can see, once it leaves the box field of the K volume, the particles get killed. I'm going to take the box field a bit down. And since we don't see that part in the camera, it doesn't matter. 
and it's going to make our animation go a bit faster as it goes to the end. And there you go. That's it. So even though our animation ends at around 90 to 100 frames, our scene has 130 frames. And that's because our fluid resolution is very low now. So it takes less time for the calculations to happen and for the animation to finish its cycle. Once we up our fluid resolution and cache it, the liquid is going to take more time to do everything that it does. So it's probably going to roll outside of the frame, not at 90 or 100, but more around 130. That's why we have 130 frames. Okay, so let's add um, a mesh. Let's mesh these particles. We're going to set the radius to 3, resolution to medium, smooth to 6 thinning to 0.2 and relax iteration to 1. Let's build the mesh and as you can see it looks horrible and that's because we have very low resolution um, fluid which means we got very low amount of particles. So let's just kind of texture things see how it looks and what we're gonna do let's set this backlight up on just for now, we're going to worry about lighting and texturing at the end, but we have to up the resolution of our fluid to in order to see our mesh as it's going to be. So let's up it to 200. And now we need to move a frame and go back a frame until it kind of recalculates. And now you can see it's way more dense. So now we need to keep moving a few frames forward until the particles relax a little bit. Uh, and form a more organic form. We're just going to kind of press next frame, next frame until we hit about five frames. And as you can see, the frames on the front view, they get a bit misaligned. So that's what we want. Um, we want them to be a bit looser. Then we're going to create initial state, then check the use initial state box, which is very important. Then we can go to zero frame zero and it's going to remember that. Now we can build our mesh. And it's not the smoothest, but for the sake of the tutorial, it's smooth enough. It's fine. If this was a, a commercial project or something like that, I would up the, the resolution to maybe a thousand. Um, you got to kind of test it out, see at what point you don't see the differences anymore. I'm sure that if we did 500 would have been fine, uh, but 200 is good for us now. Now we're going to name the fluid and the mesh in two different names. That's very important for the caching. And we're going to cache. Once we cached, I right click and baked as Olympic the cache just so I have it as Olympic. It's faster and easier to handle. And we're going to hide the scene and we're going to hide all the real flow stuff. And now, as we can see, we have an Olympic of the mesh doing its thing. And once we hit the end, as you see, it didn't completely leave the frame. Now we can recalculate it, recache it, all that stuff, but I'm going to I'm going to go the easier way. I'm just going to rotate the whole animation a little bit towards the end. But for that, we're going to have to rotate it around the axis of the sphere. What I'm going to do is I'm going to group the sphere and drag the sphere out of the side of the group. Now I have a null that has the same center as a sphere. Then I'm going to drag the alembic into that null and now I can control that null and rotate it exactly around the center point of the sphere. So let's just go to frame 125 and keyframe the Z rotation, go to the frame 130, and that's it. And now we're good. We're going to bake the first frame, current state to object, and we're going to again loop it. Like we did the last time, we're going to bring in the, um, the baked first frame of the brain. We're going to bring it in towards the end so that the animation could loop. So I'm just keyframing the, the Y axis, the Y position, and a little bit of the X rotation. And I'm bringing it from frame 100 to about frame 120. So it's going to come in and settle about 10 frames before the end. And you'll see why we need that little bit of extra keyframes in a second. And that's it. And now this 
brain is coming in towards the end so we can loop back again. Now, I want to give it a little bit of a jiggle. That's why we need those extra 10 frames so that it'll kind of jiggle a little bit. And for that, we're going to use the paint tool, set the opacity very low, add mode, visible only, unchecked. And now we're just going to paint around the edges. And we're going to slowly paint around the edges. It's a very dense mesh, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but be patient and just keep painting around the edges and kind of filling it in and a little bit in the center. And we're going to use that vertex map to tell the jiggle where to jiggle the most because we don't want the whole thing to jiggle. And I'm going to add a jiggle deformer and use that vertex map as restrictions. And I'm going to up the drag to 25%. Now, if we hit play, we can see that only kind of the edges jiggle, which is a more um, lighter and subtle effect, which is good. And let's animate the strength because I want the jiggle to be more effective at towards the end of the of the animation and not really at the start. So as you can see, as it goes in, the strength gets stronger and stronger. And let's pull the end of the 100% strength keyframe a bit more towards the end so it's even more of a subtle effect and let's bring the stiffness down to 30 and now you can really see it kind of jiggle at the end that's great now if we turn on our alembic we can see that we have a nice looping animation so I'm just going to duplicate our brain material, add a flow texture to the opacity. And just when the brain enters the frame, I'm going to keyframe the float at one. And right when it starts to move, I'm going to keyframe the float at zero. And that's going to gradually fade in the brain as it joins our scene so that it doesn't cast any shadows while it's lingering at the top and we won't have any shadows popping in once it's getting introduced to the scene. And yes, the textures are a bit different. I'm going to go over the differences. I changed them up a little bit, but let's focus on the shadows that the brain is, is um, casting and we want to see if the brain casts any sudden shadows you can see that the background is a bit darker let's compare the first and the last frame so this is the first frame is the, the right last frame is at the left and as you can see the first frame is darker which means our brain is not at a zero opacity. It looks like it should be. If we exit the camera, it's not. The brain is just there. And that's because we didn't apply the texture. Okay. We need to apply that duplicated texture on the brain, of course. And now first frame, last frame looks look exactly the same. And if we kind of go frame by frame, we can see that there's no harsh shadows that pop out of nowhere. And the transition is really smooth. Great. Now let's go over the different um, materials. I made the materials a bit better. First of all, the brain material, I made the albedo at zero so that the SSS will be more emphasized. I want it to be a bit more realistic. I turned down the density. I turned down the bias made the radius color a bit more orangey and we're just using the gradient at the albedo for color now i used a dirt node to control the coating and roughness and all that stuff um because i wanted to add a little more difference in the very variety in the roughness and coating and i just applied different gradients where the the roughness will be stronger at the crevices and the coating will be less strong in the crevices. 
and I think it looks great. Now for the for the catcher for the collider surface, I turned down the transmission, removed the the medium, so now we don't have any SSS on it. I just turned up the metallicness a little bit, and it now it gives us a bit more of a pearlescent um, look. And you know, just use a bunch of noises on the roughness and the bump to create some imperfections. It'll be a bit more interesting and then you can see the rotation as it goes. Because if this was a completely smooth surface, it would be harder to see the rotation. Made the backlight a bit bigger. So we have this, this kind of rim light, like a nice rim light that really gives us more depth, as you can see, really separates the, the subject from the background and gives us a bit more depth. And I think I played with the power and I gave a little depth of field, you know, very subtle, focusing on the brain. We don't need to see all the details in the background, but it's up to you really. And that's it. Then I rendered it and this is how it came out. Obviously the fluid simulation looks way better in real flow. And if you have this plugin, this is how you do it. Uh, I think it's amazing that you can do this kind of cool trick. And I also think it's amazing you can do it without plugins and get a really cool result like in the last tutorial. But yeah, now you know both techniques. Take it, apply it on your stuff, go crazy. I want to see what cool stuff you made with it. You can check out the original animation that I made on my Instagram at Ojang. Hit me up, follow, comment on this video, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know, if you got any suggestions for new tutorials or any questions, if you haven't figured out something, feel free to hit me up. And yeah, that's it. Hope you have a good day and see you on the next one. Peace.